Today we're going to be playing with fire and using the most hated type of device in the computer industry. A printer. But this isn't any old printer. This is a portable printer from the 90s. It has a parallel interface, a USB interface, and a IR interface, which makes it fairly interesting. It does not include a battery, so I will have to apply external power. And if I do that, I can show off one of its more interesting features. If we open up the door and press the cartridge button, we can see its coolest feature, a color image scanner. This printer allows you to swap out your ink cartridge with a scanner cartridge to extend its feature set. Pretty awesome, wouldn't you say? Now I haven't actually been able to get this to print anything. Yep, it's a printer. It hates me. We'll accept the black one. Uh, huh. Okay. Well, there we go. And there we go. We put the print cartridge in. To use the printer, we have, we're going to use my 486 laptop, but all of the removable storage devices that it can use are connected through the parallel port. But we also need to connect the printer to the parallel port. And so enters this horrible nightmare of wires. We have a parallel port data switch here, which allows us to switch between the A and the B connector. We have the laptop connected to the main input here. On A, we have just the floppy drive because it, while it connects to a parallel port, it is not a true parallel port device and anything else on the parallel port bus with it will receive unusual and unexpected signals. On the B port, we have the parallel port CD drive connected and then connected to the CD drive, we have the printer. So there's going to be a lot of switching if we have to do anything with a floppy drive, but if we don't, then just the CD drive can be connected and all is well. Now let's go ahead and try and use the printer. All right, here we are ready to get started. So um, I have in here the black and white cartridge because it wouldn't accept the color cartridge for some reason. So we'll see if we can get that working first. So let's just try setting it up as a generic text printer. Print test page. Oh, we would probably like some paper. And that's what has happened for me before. Nothing. Now I have new ink in this printer. And I know that that's not the problem. So I'm left wondering, what can I do to fix this thing? And the reason that I'm making this video is because fortune struck upon me, and I found another one. It's not quite the same, but it's pretty similar. Now this is really unusual because to the best of my knowledge, these are not a common printer. Uh, and to find two of them at Goodwill, because yeah, that's where that one came from as well. Uh, I'm pretty surprised. Now obviously this one's different. This is a BJC70 and even though it has a display and it looks fancier, I'm not convinced it's a higher end model. Um, for one, there's no USB port. Well, there's no USB port over here. There's no IR port over here. Um, but this one does advertise color. Now I haven't actually bothered looking these up. I don't know, maybe this is a better one. Uh, I'm looking at the label of the other one we can see that it may not say 
color on the front, but it does show the color cartridge in the directions. So it's most likely that this one's also color, but they're com likely comparable models. Now let's unplug this one, plug in the other one, and see what happens. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. Get the cartridge. I'll turn it on. The display is doing stuff. All right. Two grins and giggles. Let's run the paper through and see what happens. Ugh. Yeah, I don't think it's going to work. And print. Shocking. All right, give me that cartridge. So these are definitely the same cartridge and that's, oh, they're not quite the same. Oh, I hope they're compatible. I really do. Hmm. Interesting. Now, before I got this second printer, I'd looked up how to remedy this cartridge. And one of the recommended ways is to soak it in hot, soapy water to clean out any gunk that's built up in here. But I wasn't really keen on doing that when I only had one, and I wasn't really familiar with that procedure. Because there's clearly some plastic that's adhered here, and I wasn't sure if it would lift off or anything else, and I just didn't like that idea. But now that I have two, I have nothing to lose if I soak one of these in hot, soapy water. So I'm going to try that and see if I can resurrect one. Because it would be really cool if I could get this thing to work. Alright, so we'll go ahead and take out our ink cartridges first. These are probably no good. Um, they are really dry and crusty. And we can see that the ink is meant to feed down into these little areas in here. And yeah, that's probably all caked in full of crud by now. So what we're going to use is this insanely hot water. Let me get a pyrometer turned on here and convert it into imperial because uh, you know so ambient temperature is 85 water temperature is 146 so let's go ahead and start with that put a tiny amount of soap water And let's be go. Oh, yeah. Ooh. That's already working. Mmm. Yum. Let's, let's pour right into that. Oh, God. Wow. That black. Jeez. Ooh. Man. I'm going to dump that out. Wow. I think I'm going to want to cycle the water here, change it out really quick. Okay, there may be something to this method. I'll probably regret that. Yep. Eh. Ow, that water hurts. <laughs> oh man, this is getting out of, ho out of hand. Uh, I'll be back. Yeah, I need to change out that water already. Okay. Uh, that has been soaking much longer than you've seen, but I'm going to change out the water, so I'm just going to dump it into a trash can really close here. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, oh, crap. <laughs>
beat the devil out of it. Let's get that off the computer. Oh, did I get some on the USB mat here? Yeah. Uh, printer paper. That's a that's a good paper towel. Okay. That's more soap. I'm not sure if that was part of the success there. And put this back. I'm just going to pour the water through it again. All right. This is clearly doing something. Here, see what the temperature is of the water still. We're at 17, or so we're losing some heat, but it's clearly working. I wonder how long we need to let this dry for. Okay, so I think this thing's mostly clean. Uh, I'm going to go rinse it off. And then, uh, I mean, it really needs to dry, so... Kind of puts a hold on progress here, so I'll go take care of that and then set it somewhere to dry. Maybe put a fan over it. I don't know, I don't know how much that'll help. These are probably fill sponges. This probably should set overnight now that I think about it. Really, um, that's gonna make doing this video fun. All right, I have the cartridge sitting somewhere to dry, and we'll see how that turns out in a few days. For now, I still want to put a video out today, so we're going to take a look at the scanning cartridge. So let's swap out the cartridge in here, which will be just the black and white cartridge, for the scanning one. And there we go. Now I tested this printer before, it came with the actual scanner driver and some of the documentation, so I couldn't help myself. but. Uh, we can take a look at how that works. Let's go ahead and bring up the scanner driver. There we go. Now we're going to capture an image. And unlike a flatbed scanner, you can't exactly get a preview, so you have to set up everything the first time. So we're going to need, let's, let's say we're going to scan a photo. Uh, wait, image type, grayscale. No, we don't want grayscale. Who wants a grayscale photo? Yeah, okay, we're going to do, it's going to be letter, 8.5 by 11. We're going to do a full scan. Um, ooh, pre-scan. Ooh, maybe we're going to do that. Now. We need to have something we can scan, and I thought this might be kind of interesting, an autographed portrait of Patrick Stewart. So we're going to use that as our scan item, and let's do a pre-scan. That obviously came out kind of dark and uh, upside down, so we'll feed it upside down in the future. We could just rotate the image, but this is a little easier. So it's supposed to be color. Um, image type color. Oh, pre scan is grayscale. Oh, okay. If I do color, will the pre scan be? No. Oh, okay. So photo. Can I. Can I edit those settings? Is there nowhere to do this? Wow, that sucks. Um, okay. 
Well, it's dark. There's, I want to be able to increase the brightness. Well, who knows? All right. Now, this thing is crazy slow at scanning, as you will soon find out. I'm going to have to restart the uh, video capture before I even do this, because I don't even know if the 10 minute limit on my camera is going to be enough. So we're going to see. Uh, but yeah, it's ridiculous. So let me get prepared for that. All right, here we go. And it begins. Oh yeah, while well, that's going, I think I'm going to play some Switch. Stupid pro controller won't work. And there we go, finished. It only took a half hour. Be sure to click save here. Because, oh man, if I lost that, I would not recreate it. Oh. 
that's not good. Space and selected drive insufficient. Um, well, that sucks. <laughs> holding it in memory it only got 24 megs of ram it can't it can't what is it in the temp folder oh man this isn't good it can't possibly fit it in ram and then not be able to fit it here i mean that would be insane what is this how big is it it's a 2 gig drive in there. I can't remember if I, I have the whole thing. Oh, I shouldn't open that. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no, no. Total size. Free space. 47 megs. No, oh, I'm saving that picture. I don't care. I'm probably going to have to delete, delete a game or two to get it. I think it's only like 300 DPI, maybe. Oh. This thing is choking so hard. Oh man. Wow. Yeah, okay, so that was the scan of a Vita thing there. How big is that? Probably pretty huge. 16 megs. That wasn't too big when I did it, so we'll, we'll permanently delete that. Yes. And then we'll uninstall our Shadow Warrior. That was huge. And runs horribly. Alright. Let's see how much free space we have now. 98 megs. Let's see if that's enough. Oh, okay, now it's going to take it. Whew! saving. Ah, uh, 360 DPI. Oh, it tells you how big it is. Uh, so it's going to be 300, just 33 megs, is it? Really? It's 47 megs free. Weird. Oh man, it's going to be that big. How am I going to get it off of this computer? Oh wait, no, it's an SD card. I'll just I can pull it off the operating system drive. There we go. Let me make sure that it's saved. Bingo. Properties. Boom. Okay, there we go. And now, cut to me having edited the picture in. Ta-da! I don't know what this looks like yet when I'm recording the audio, but I think it looks okay. All right, there's a look at a weird piece of history. Um, when I get the cartridge from the other one finished uh, drying here, I'll do a follow-up video um, and continue this, because obviously we're not done yet. Because I really badly want to use that IR, because this laptop has an IR port. And that's just like, whoa, it's got to happen. So I really want to do that. As you can probably tell. Um, so I, I'm i going to make that happen. I don't care what I got to do. That's, that's going to happen. So we're coming back to this. Uh, we'll take a look at that. But for now, that was a look at using the scanner for the printer. Which, ooh, it's pretty warm now. Hmm, that's not too surprising. Look at how much I.O. there is. And it's probably only for the scanner. I mean... The printer cartridges have that too, but they, they really don't need that, I suspect. But yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, a portable printer scanner from the 90s, this thing's awesome. So, alright, this has been Akbakuku. I hope you found that interesting. I know I'm fascinated by this, but it's a printer. I mean, come on, how many people could really like that? So, I hope some of you enjoyed that. I'll see you next time.